Hi, welcome to Edward Box Guitar Tuition. So my classic album inspection today is UFO's Obsession. So this was their fifth album with Michael Schenker, and this is the last studio album we did in their classic era. It was released today, which is 21st of June, 1978, just looking there, and it's 35 years old today. So short but sweet album, just at 35 minutes and 39 seconds. This made number 40, winning the US charts. Uh, so it didn't chart quite as high as Lights Out, which made number 23, and I think that that was kind of probably a bit of a shock to the band. Um, I don't know why this didn't kind of push them further. Um, it's a really good follow-up record. It made number 26 in the UK. Again, it was produced by Ron Neverson. And interestingly enough, that's used a mobile studio for this. So they went to CP McGregor's and the Western Third Corner Station. Uh, so these were two like kind of uh, depot type things in Los Angeles. The second one's a post office. Uh, I think that's where they got like the really big drum sound one of the like, kind of really hard sounding rooms for uh, Andy Parker. Um, so that, yeah, the record plant mobile is quite famous. A lot of people use that in the seventies. Uh, Mike Clink was the engineer, um, he of uh, Rust in Peace fame and of course Appetite for Destruction. Um, so yeah, like delving in, uh, I don't think this album's as good as Lights Out. It's just not quite as consistent, but it's different. Uh, it's heavier in some ways, the production's different. Uh, I really like the sound of it. Mainly criticism, there's far too much kind of effect on Shanker's lead guitar um, for me. But the drum sounds better than Lights Out. Uh, so Opens With Only You Can Rock Me. This is uh, Pete Way, uh, Michael Schenker, film mob composition. This is great, it's a classic. Uh, they always play this live. Um, it's quite an interesting story about this. They were trying to come up with a, the, the kind of the, the we are here and there's no end bit. So they had one bit and they just couldn't, I guess Pete Wade come up with a kind of down, 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 down. And allegedly for ages, Shanko was just lying on the floor of the rehearsal room trying to come up with stuff. And it took him something like four days, but eventually it appeared, magically appeared to the part. Uh, so yeah, it's a great track. Um, still a classic of rock radio, planet rock and things like that. Really good. Then the next track is one that did play live on the tour, Pack It Up and Go. This has got a great Bonham sort of style intro, the drums, uh, ripping riff, fantastic lead guitar work from Schenker. Like, it's a shame it's a bit too much effect on it, um, but it's quite a cool lyric. It's the same writers as uh, Only You Can Rock Me. Um, and it's kind of uh, saying, move over, Pack It Up and Go, you know, the new bands in town. Um, uh, yeah, so that's another cracker. Um, then you've got a little instrumental, Arbury Hill. This is Mark Schenker, acoustic guitar and flute. I don't know if he, or recorders, I think he might have played them. Uh, it's a nice, nice little piece. Not amazing, but it's one of those nice little Schenker things. And then Paul Raymond and Phil Mogg write the next track, which is uh, Ain't, Ain't No Baby. Yeah, it's like the check there. So the, the meaning behind this lyric was that their record label, Chrysalis, were having a bit of success with the babies at the time. The, the, the John Waite fronted group had some single success, although they weren't successful in the end because they ran up huge debts of like a million quid or two million quid or something. Ron Neverson had produced them as well, I think. Uh, but um, uh, they were like, well, we ain't no baby with UFO. So that's the kind of mean lyric. This is cool. It's got a slinky riff, um, great guitar, really good vocal by Phil. Some quite nice um, sort of keyboard sounds on this. Uh, and then side one of the original violin finishes we're looking at for number one. Just checking there, 434. Someone's got muddle in the track order on this. Um, this is a film mod Paul Raymond composition. This is great, um, really nice, amazing string arrangement on this. So again, um, Paul, um, Ron Neverson, sorry, bringing out uh, an orchestration really well. Lovely um, guitar by Schenker. And then later on at track nine, it will do looking out for number one reprise. So this is just Schenker and Raymond. Uh, so it's just taking the keyboard part. There's lush string arrangement on it and Schenker does beautiful lead arrangement with harmony guitars. And when I was listening to it today, I was actually, that's fucking brilliant. You know, you sort of forget how good looking out for number one reprise is. Um, but that's side two. Side two, original vinyl opens with Hot and Ready. It's absolute cork. It's maybe one of Schenker's greatest guitar moments. Um, his lightning fast pentatonics and blues are on full flow on this. He does a phenomenal solo. This is a total rocker. Again, this was played live. Um, if you have a sort of Strange in the Night special edition, I think it's got Cherry and Hot and Ready as extras and on the tour to play Packing Up and Go. But I think it didn't get as good a look out this album because those tracks didn't make Strange in the Night. Whenever they play live, they just tend to play only You Can Rock Me and Cherry for some reason. Um, 
And that brings me to track seven. Uh, I think that's Cherry. Yeah. So 334. This is a way mark. So cool. Feet way base. Probably the weakest track on the album, this. Um, like I say, seems to get rolled out live. Seems to get played on classical radio. There's much better UFO songs. But I, I do quite like it. Um, uh, it's kind of, um, you know, about a girl in a bar, like a dancer and that. I'm, I'm not, it's just one of those ones I'm not totally struck on. Um, but it was kind of, it's kind of a bit of a sort of, you know, minor kind of UFO hit track, you know, sort of a hit that people know. Um, and then track eight was uh, some You Don't Fool Me. Um, so this is another kind of dirty riff. Uh, not quite as good as Ain't No Baby. Cool kind of climbing guitar, key change guitar solo from Shanker on this. Uh, it's a Shanker Parker mod composition. So Andy Parker gets in on this. Um Obviously, then you've got looking out for number one reprise. And then one of the, the really top deep cut off the album, which is One More for Rodeo. I think this is a great lyric by Phil Mogg. It's kind of capturing that, you know, you're out in the Midwest and you've got kind of like, I'd imagine you're driving through and you're kind of seeing used up masculinity. Kind of reminds me of the lyric of like Junior Bonner, the Sam Peckinpah film. And I think, I think Mogg's got a real feeling for Americana. He's, he's, got, he's got that in his, his lyrics when he's starting to tour over there. And then he really starts to find his fruition, uh, you know, later on with his Springsteen S tape. But um, I actually saw them play this live on their Reformation tour in 1998. So again, it's another deep cut. It did get a run out, but it's just not as well known as that Lights Out stuff and the Strangers in the Night uh, material. Then it finishes off with Born to Lose. It was a nice ballad, uh, nice string arrangements. Um, uh, not my favourite track on album, but it's good. Um, what I'd say is I'm listening to today, you've got seven kind of corking tracks and the other four tracks are kind of six out of ten. Uh, I think Lights Out's easily a nine out of ten. I think it's an eight and a half out of ten. I was watching some of it recently and people, the two reviewers on that seem to be a bit down on it and I, I don't get that. I mean, this has always been a classic UFO album. Uh, you know, I would still say that Lights Out and Obsession, uh, you know, are the best, you know, they're, they're the, the absolute monsters. I just think the difference with this is just a little more kind of going different places, like Lights Out's very focused and deficient. I'm trying to think really why it didn't do quite as well. I think I've always had a theory that because Shanker won't walk about in the Lights Out to a lot of people, guitarists, would have been going to the gigs expecting to see Shanker and then maybe saw Paul Chapman and maybe put them off a bit. Oh, I'm a bit fucked off a UFO. Shanker came back. But they were kind of touring uh, Lights Out. And it says it was recorded 77 to 78. So I think they were maybe recording this in different periods, this album. Then, you know, this came out a year after Lights Out. And then had the live album out in January 79. So, and then by then, Schenker was gone. He left October 78, I think. Or maybe a little prior to that. So there's just a lot of activity in UFO. And then Schenker had gone and... They just lost, uh, they lost the momentum in the US. And their album's still charted like number 50 and they're still putting good crowds with Tom Chapman. But they were at that critical point and Finn Lizzy had the same situation where everything needed to come together. They needed every member, everyone in perfect health, you know, uh, to, to put that push through and get the, the right track on radio. And it didn't quite happen. Um, but yeah, that's Obsession, uh, 45 years old today. Like I say, I've probably heard this album back in 81, so... Long time ago. Uh, yeah, I think we covered everything there. Um, check it out. Cheers, thanks very much.